So now we're, we'll move into the ideas of Egyptian uh, biogeometry. The knowledge of what was done in the ancient Egyptian temples was basically lost. And they have a, a saying in Egypt that our mysteries were never betrayed, meaning that what was secret in the temple stayed secret in the temple. You know, for myself and for many other people who begin to remember past lives, one of the first past lives they remember is Egyptian. Now, I find that fascinating because we've had other past lives more recently. Why don't we remember those first? There's something about the Egyptian incarnations that are so significant to us. Would the and energetic frequency that we lived in that life be so loud as maybe the like a, just a slang word, but so such a high frequency, such a standout frequency that we're picking up at that energetic signature in our past first, because it's like the most complicated, the most progressive. Could it be that? I do think that's one part of it. Many of the images you see in classical religions are sacred geometry forms that have a deeper meaning or teaching behind them. But only the initiates are taught the deeper meaning. The average person only understands at the surface level. Example, the original Jewish menorah from the Jewish Kabbalistic tradition. Mm -hmm. So there's seven candlesticks. The first mm -hmm. one is connected in a great arc to the seventh one. The second in a great arc to the sixth. The third in a great arc to the fifth. And the fourth one stands alone. Now, the Jewish Kabbalistic tradition has a very deep understanding of time and time cycles. And so what this embeds is that certain periods of time are divided into seven stages, like a seven-stage alchemical process in time. Cutting to the chase, you're going into all the details. In the time since the Atlantean catastrophe in the Western tradition, it's understood, for example, with the European Rosicrucians, that the third post-Atlantean epoch was the Egyptian epoch. And the one we're at now is the fifth epoch, the European epoch where the Europeans became the dominant people. That's the what world. we're in now? That's right. And so there's a connection between the third and the fifth because it's like the fourth is the dividing point. It's like a mirror image. So the third and the fifth are mirrors of each other, second and the sixth, first and the seventh. Without going into all the details of it, this means that we're in a part of a time cycle right now where if you understand the greater structure of the time cycle is we're having a certain type of reflection going the opposite direction of what we had in ancient Egypt. And so we have a natural fascination with our time in ancient Egypt. And if you turn on, you know, some documentary channel on TV, the vast majority of documentaries about ancient cultures are all about Egypt. There's very, very few about ancient Persia and other cultures are all about Egypt. But that's because that's being reawakened in us, the knowledge we had then, but now in a later stage of evolution. So there's all of there's hidden sacred geometry patterns of time as well as in space. So that's my answer to the whole thing about, you know, why is the Egyptian so important now? How is it that we're connecting to these different time space rea time space realities, the third and the fifth, the first and the seventh, these things? How explain that from a geometric standpoint, from a pattern standpoint? So when you have a cycle of seven, there's a natural relationship where the very first stage gets reflected in the in the last stage. It's a, it's a polarity relationship. Everything's polarities, right? Yep. So, yep, so you're, yep, you're coming yep. in and you're going out. They talk about that with dimensions a lot, where yes. um, like the, the last connects back to the first again. That's always the case. Okay. All of us in, that have these recollections of ourselves in ancient Egypt, there's a part of that that's being activated right now. Now, once we get into, if we're incarnating, let's say, in the sixth post-Atlantean epoch, we may be much more focused on our ancient Persian incarnations. That's something that will be called up inside of us. There's a great idea in what's called uh, Vedic astrology or Jyotish in India, which which is uh, that in, there are certain moments in time where your karmas will ripen, your karmas will be activated. They have a whole science of this in, in India, of the Dasha periods. It doesn't exist in Western astrology at all. Mm. But in the Indian system, you can get your Dashas read and you'll know what karma is going to ripen at what moment of your life. Certain experiences will happen then. Same thing for us with our whole incarnation right now. There's a certain karma that's ripening from ancient Egypt having to do with the abilities we gained there, remembering, regaining those abilities, bringing them to bear in our lives right now. 
and bringing them to prayer on the earth to help the earth as a whole right now. Everything is integrally linked in a larger energetic and spiritual system that modern science has no concept of. They only look at the broken fragments that appear into physical reality. They look at the collapse of the wave function where the energetic waves have become a physical object, but they no longer understand the larger matrix that the waves are in, including at the higher consciousness levels mm -hmm. before a wave that created the physical world even came to into existence. Mm -hmm. So understanding it from the classical traditions of multiple planes of existence, all of which we participate in, we all have those within ourselves and can experience all of them in mm -hmm. ourselves is a way to understand this. And fractals is a modern concept that really helps us to understand how the same pattern at a higher level of scale, the same pattern at a higher uh, plane level manifest here on this plane with the same pattern but reduced in scale. I'll, I'll give you a particular example of an idea of, of fractal reality from 2,000 years ago in Alexandria, Egypt. In the early Christian centuries, when they were trying to understand what is the nature of the Christ being in early Christianity, one of the great, now called a church father, Origen, living in Alexandria, Egypt, wrote an incredible book called On First Principles. And in it, he says, the only way you can understand what the Christ being is, we're not talking about the master Jesus as a human being. We're talking about this larger cosmological being, the solar logos, the Christ being. It says the way to understand what this being is, is that the Godhead is so vast. The Godhead is everything. It's so vast that you don't get a, 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 a view of what that being is because it's everything everywhere. He says what the Christ being is, is a macrocosmic being that has all the qualities of the Godhead, but reduced in scale to the macrocosmic level to where we can actually perceive and interact with this being. Mm -hmm. And then humanity also has the qualities of the Godhead, but we're reduced to the microcosmic level. We're another level reduced, but it's the exact same fractal pattern. Mm -hmm. and, and so we are microcosmic beings with all the potentials of the Godhead latent inside of us, most of which have been neutralized because people are so screwed up today. If you actually had these higher powers, you'd create incredible destruction all around you. But this idea that it's a fractal movement from one level to another is an ancient concept. But today we can express it in geometry and math and, and get it as a visual hit. That's why I like describing the idea about how the seven time periods in a cycle work together by giving the geometric form. And that's what they thought in ancient Judaism too, which is why they gave the image of the menorah. They didn't explain to the average person what it meant. That was for the initiate to understand that's the structure of time cycles. Is there something to be said about these geometric structures, even being in Egypt? They said that the, you know, the ram or any of the heads of the lions of the of the animals were were actually geometrically activating something within you when you looked at it. Mm. Is there something happening by just observing these? structures these patterns a absolutely so for this let me go to the work of biogeometry and my friend and teacher in egypt dr ibrahim kareem and he's got some amazing work on this within the the biogeometry work mm -hmm. so one aspect of this is that he talks about the way that in ancient egypt they knew an incredible secret and that secret was the design code behind everything in creation the design code that allows you to crystallize physical forms into a physical world from higher energetic states. And that this became expressed through things like the hieroglyphic text and through some of the expressions that they had with design in ancient Egypt. And so there are certain energy emanations coming from certain hieroglyphs that if you test it with energetic methods like vibrational radiesthesia, Mm -hmm. where you can detect subtle energy waves coming off of things. Some of these hieroglyphs have very powerful energetic waves coming off them because of the shape information. Oh, wow. Like the indentions into the walls of the yes. shape that it is, it would it would bounce off of it and create energetic it, structure? It, cre it creates an energetic effect. So like you were saying, if you look at it, does it have an effect on you? And the answer is yes. So they found ways to work with shape information to be able to bring forward all types of energy states. So in biogeometry, to explain how we get the effects we get with the work, one of the, the concepts that we use developed by Dr. Kareem is that energy into shape 
creates function. So energy is a proteus. It could take any form. But how do we program the energy to do a specific thing? We have that energy move in a specific pattern. Mm -hmm. So the energy movement pattern programs the energy to take the action. Mm -hmm. Now, that's why your heart has a specific geometric shape that's completely different from the shape of the liver. That's different from the shape of the spleen. Because the actual shape is related to the function. <gasps> and so that's what biosignatures are. You mentioned earlier biosignatures, so I'm just cycling back to that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So once Shake Dr. matters. Yeah, it absolutely matters. Holy shit. It's like it's like form follows function, right? So energy into shape creates function. That shape of the heart, that shape of the liver, that shape of the kidney, it actually then becomes a container that has energy circulations inside of it. When that energy circulation in the organ becomes impaired, then the function begins to degrade. So what you're doing when you provide a biosignature to a person is you're creating a resonance effect, reminding the body of the correct energy circulation, and then restoring the function to it. Now, we don't make any medical claims for it, but that's the idea. So what is disease then? Well, disease... <laughs> That becomes another larger topic. There's actually a section on that in the advanced training of biogeometry. But in dealing with it in a very short frame, one aspect of this is that we have lost the correct energy circulation that created the function of that part of the body to begin with. Okay. And at a deeper metaphysical level, it means that we've lost a resonance between the health-giving source at a higher level of what comes into the body, we're no longer connected to it. We're no longer resonating with it. Oh. We got to reconnect with it. It's like stuck. It's dormant. And so that's why mm. this the, uh, healing is very important. But again, it's to become whole again. The energy circulations are back. We're reconnected to those larger metaphysical levels. I mean, why is cardiac disease one of the, the biggest killers in the West today? Broken and hearts. Exactly. Everybody's got a broken heart. Everybody's got an armored heart they hold rigid if you like this clip and you want to hear the whole episode click at the bottom of your screen